How's it going, Katanning? We are back for another episode of the Katanning Podcast. Uh, very excited to continue this series with our commissioner candidates. I have today with me uh, candidate Jan Jensen, and I just couldn't be more excited to have you, sir. Welcome okay. to the show. Thank you. Glad yeah. to be here. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah. So you guys might know um, this is our third in a series. I have at least six of the seven candidates um, that are going to be coming for interviews. And so I'm just excited for you guys to get to know each one of your candidates. I think Jan will have some uh, interesting things for us today to separate himself a little bit from the pack. And um, just want to learn more about you, sir. So tell us about your history in Armstrong County. Uh, tell us who you are. Okay. Um, my history in Armstrong County, I uh, graduated from Penn State Mechanical Engineering in 1976 and uh, moved to Leechburg and uh, started to work for Allegheny Ludlam Steel. And in that, uh, during that time, um, I went on the Leechburg Area School Board as I worked at the mill and our daughters attended school in Leechburg. Um, at the, at, uh, when, when the girls graduated high school, uh, my wife and I moved up to Worthington, uh, to a small farm, uh, to make it easier to travel to Elwood City Fords. I had transferred to Elwood City Fords in Elwood City and I needed a good four lane road both ways. Yeah. So I, I worked, uh, at Elwood City Fords then. Um, also own uh, a larger farm um, in Top, PA. Top is about halfway between Shea and Brick Church on Garrett's Run Road. Okay. And we had a camp on the Allegheny River. And um, in the last oh, 10 years, I have been doing um, worldwide consulting in the heat treating industry, but still based in Armstrong County. Okay. Well, very good. So I know you've uh, you've ran for commissioner before. Um, what do you feel that makes you uniquely qualified to be our, our next county commissioner? Well, it, it is a good exercise to go through uh, the first time and to get familiar with the system. Uh, there's a lot of tough little points uh, up there at the courthouse with having the right paperwork, the right documentation to the right time and the right date. For so, sure, yeah. Yeah, it's a big machine up there. No oh doubt. yes, oh yes. <laughs> Even for a small county, it can be a it can be a yeah. tough animal to, to tackle there. So what else do you what else do you have that's uh, that you believe makes you qualified to be our next commissioner? Well, I have I have a number a number of things. Um, number one, um, there's two veterans running for in this commissioner race. There's myself, a conservative Republican. Um, of course, pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, pro-work, uh, pro-family, the whole thing. And there's also Democrat Anthony Shea. Um, Anthony and I, are, again, are both military veterans. I'm a U.S. Army infantry veteran, and he's an Air Force veteran. Um, and he is what I would judge to be a blue dog Democrat. He's, um, he's also pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, pro-work, pro-family. Uh, our families have known each other for years. So that, the fact that we've both traveled and lived around the world, in addition to living in Armstrong County, uh, we bring the world to Armstrong County, not just Armstrong County to Armstrong County. Yeah. Um, the... the uh, the fact that I'm a past school board member in Leechburg and currently auditor for West Franklin Township, so I've stayed involved in government over the years. Um, a degree mechanical engineer with a master's in business, uh, the math, no problem, data, making logical common sense decisions, no problem with that educational background. And lastly, I've managed several industrial businesses for profit and loss. Um, very proud to say that in the time that I've managed those places, I had very low turnover because I treat people as I wish to be treated. So for those reasons, I feel I'm well qualified to be your commissioner. 
I like that. Very good. Uh, so uh, just to know a little bit more about you, we'll get into some policy stuff here in a minute. But okay. uh, just to get a little more about you, you know, what do you love about Armstrong County? What are your What are your favorite things about our area? Well, it's a beautiful, forested, rural county with a river right down through it. It's it's it's. Uh, we have two federal parks: the Mahoning Dam and the uh, Crooked Creek Dam. Uh, we have trails. We have year-round activities. Uh, we actually don't have enough weekends because it, <laughs> it, it's so packed. You're okay. right. <laughs> you have to make choices during during the season. Yeah. So we have plenty to do in Armstrong County. Uh, we have a strong antique car culture in this county. Uh, my wife and I are members of a number of car clubs, the Keystone Cruisers, the Katani Car Club, uh, the Crosley Car Club. So there's a strong antique car culture uh, in this county. Yeah, I uh, I agree with you about the not enough weekends, but I always hear people say, there's just nothing to do around here. And I'm oh like, my. I just say, have oh you my. looked at the calendar? Look <laughs> at the county calendar. There's always stuff like every weekend to do. So Come out to the cadet on a, on a Wednesday night when we have a car cruise. You'll, you'll be entertained. <laughs> there you go. Um, so how about, your, what's your favorite things to do in the county? Favorite places to visit? Well, the, the, the river is what makes Armstrong County unique. Um, it's navigable the whole distance right down through the, the county. Um, although there's currently not any industrial use for the river, like the Monongahela River has, um, we do have the ARDC, the uh, Allegheny River Development Corporation, and they are big on promoting the recreational use of the Allegheny River. And I think that's big for Armstrong County. And, and, and we need to support the ARDC. Uh, when that concept was being put together because the Army Corps of Engineers no longer wanted to run the locks, uh, I was one of the people that volunteered, hey, train me, I'll, I'll go operate a lock yeah. uh, to help the tourism. That's awesome. And, and that offer's still there. I'd love to go run a lock. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Um, how about your favorite restaurant in the county? Well, uh, Bobby and I frequent uh, the Craft House, uh, Mel's, Villa, the Cadet, um, and a number of others. Uh, I've done the math for, for two people to buy all the groceries and do all the cooking and use the gas. And that, we've decided that you can pretty well match your costs by letting somebody else do that work <laughs> and, and help promote those businesses in the area. There you go. Um, the, we also like the, the spigot brewing in Ford City. I think that's a very nicely put together operation by the Graftons. Yeah, it's pretty uh, interesting, Ford City. Uh, they're building a nice little culture down there. Oh, with absolutely. That, with that place yeah. and Harper's Grill and uh, some good absolutely. stuff happening in Ford City. One of the things we do, Andrew, is um, we recycle the spent grains as cow feed. Oh, there you go. So it doesn't even go into the dumpsters or anything. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Feed, feed cows with it. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I've been trying to get produce people to feed my chickens, you know, give me their yeah. spare produce. Yeah. So, But that's a good idea. <laughs> So we'll get it. That's uh, just to get a little more about you. Now we'll get into some policy stuff. Um, as the county commissioner, I'm sure that you're considering problems in Armstrong County and what you want to do about them. Uh, what do you see as the three biggest problems in Armstrong County? The three biggest problems are lack of industrial jobs, mismanagement in county government, and taxes. Those are the three biggest problems I see. The lack of industrial jobs. Um, Industry is the foundation that builds an economy. When you have industry, you'll have businesses that support that industry. Um, if you take a look at um, uh, uh, the business model for the company Fastenal, Fastenal you'll find located anywhere where there's industry. They supply fasteners, uh, safety equipment, uh, tools, so on and so forth. You find industry, you'll find a Fastenal. We don't have a fastenal in Armstrong County. We don't need it. Uh, our three biggest employers in this county are all three service organizations, the hospital, the school districts, and the county. If that's all you have, if all you have is service, 
you're in trouble. Okay. Uh, mismanagement county government. Uh, we have problems with favoritism, hiring friends, uh, issues that lead to lawsuits. Uh, we have mold in a courthouse. We have a courthouse that's deteriorating. The soffit and fana, pa, the soffit and fascia, the paint is coming off of it. The cupola on top is in bad shape. It has been mentioned numerous times before. Folks, it's just getting worse up there. We need to take care of those kinds of issues. Taxes. Taxes. We're taxed to death, and it's not getting any better. We have a declining population. We have a declining enrollment in the school district. Our taxes scare people away. Senior citizens move most times south to find a more tax-friendly state. Young people have to leave to find work. You go over Route 28, uh, 5, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, the headlights are all headed to Pittsburgh. You go back in the evening, 5, 6, 7 o'clock, the headlights are all coming back toward Catanning. We, we, need, to, we need to turn this around. We, we need to industrialize Armstrong County once again. Okay. Well, and that kind of leads right into my, my next question. Um, I've been talking specifically about four different issues for the city of Catanning. And so um, just to kind of go through those one by one, because I think as Catanning goes, kind of so goes the county um, as the county seat. But um, I want to, you know, identify those in Catanning and then just see how you would solve those problems, not only for our city, but for the entire county. Right. So number one is um, the availability of jobs, just what you said. How would you plan to attract new businesses how would you plan to fill up downtown areas, areas like North Point? You know, what would you do as county commissioner to help solve that issue? Okay, as county commissioner, I would use my industrial contacts to sell Armstrong County to potential industry. Um, I will be an ambassador for this county. Um, Jim Scahill, when he was commissioner, was an ambassador for this county. Uh, I flew in and out of Pittsburgh a lot. You ride the tram out to the terminal. There was a video in the tram station of an airplane flying down through a beautiful river setting with the, with the woods on both sides, and Jim talking, saying, hey, Armstrong County, the best thing next to Pittsburgh. So Jim was selling Armstrong County. That's an important thing to do. You have to be in the job of commissioner. You have to be an ambassador for the county. Um, I, I throw full support behind Lenape Tech. Lenape Tech is the gem of Armstrong County. We have the industry. We can supply good, qualified, trained people to work in that industry. We have many things going for us here. We have the land. We have the industrial park up at North Point. We have coal, gas, electricity. We have Lenape. We lack a few things, and I'd like to go into those a little bit. Sure. We lack rail. Uh, we don't have rail to North Point, and, and, and that's not really doable. We have an excellent four-lane road. If you go a little bit distance over into Butler County, Saxonburg area, the old U.S. steel centering plant is gone and has been torn down, but the railroad siding remained. The... Butler County put that into an industrial park, and it's booming. There's all these there. There's all kind of warehouses there. They're serviced by rail. They absolutely clog Route 228 with semis. The, 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 the disadvantage that they have is a two-lane road. We have a four-lane road. Mm -hmm. The advantage that they have is the rail. Um, we don't have the rail. The second thing that we lack here is a real four-lane road from Catanning to Route 80. We have a real four-lane road from Catanning to Pittsburgh. We need one up to Route 80. The naysayers will say, well, yeah, that's an impossible terrain to build a road. No, it's not. No, if you go to West Virginia and you drive Route 79 at 70 miles an hour the whole way down through that state, and they did that in those mountains, you can build a road anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> including Armstrong County. That's true. <laughs> and the last thing uh, is an airport. Now, I don't put the airport as the highest priority, but an airport would help t 
to industrialize Armstrong County. The problem with an airport, <coughs> and same with industrializing the county, is the situation where people say, well, not in my backyard. Right. Well, yeah, you're going to have to have some of this stuff in your backyard unless you want to see us continue to go the route we're going. Okay. So uh, we have many things. We lack a few things. So in the lacking, um, what would you propose then as far as, I mean, you said r getting rail to North Point maybe isn't feasible. Just maybe having a second industrial park to tr to uh, to put the company in there that needs a specific thing, or what would you Well, propose? that's a good point. Along the west side of the river, we do still have rail, yeah. and, and the Snyder companies are serviced by rail right across the bridge. Um, up along the river, the, the Greco's uh, scrapyard is serviced by rail. Mm -hmm. So we do have rail on that side. We, we could develop for those that need rail. Uh, the road is, is quite good. It can handle truck traffic. Um, it's still a little bit of a challenge getting to the four lane, but you can get there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's just interesting. I've never heard those points really brought up. So yeah. uh, it's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, so the second uh, big problem that, that we identify in, in the city of Catanning and obviously Armstrong County is the opioid epidemic. Um, Catanning and Armstrong, well, Armstrong County was number two in the state uh, four years ago for o uh, overdose yes. deaths. And I believe we're number four in the state as of last year. So we're going in the right direction, but obviously still a very big problem. Um, how, would you, how would you operate as county commissioner to help solve that problem? Absolutely. As a commissioner... I would fully support the sheriff, um, the the canine project, detectives, the court system, police services in doing their job to solve that problem. I'm not a micromanager. I'm not going to go in there and do their job for them. We have good people in place. Turn them loose. Let them do their job. Make sure they're properly funded. And and I don't have to do that work myself. Sure. Again, there's good people in place to do that. Okay. Well, very good. Uh, the third problem that we saw is uh, is blight. Um, I, I've had a couple people ask me to define blight. So blight would be you have a, a bad house, a house that isn't being taken care of, or a commercial property, for that matter, that isn't being taken care of. That tends to make someone not want to live next to it, and so the blight spreads. And so we have that not only in Catanning, but many other cities, and even in the country um, in certain areas. Uh, do you, what do you see as your role as county commissioner as being part of solving that problem? Again, uh, I, I take you back to industry being the foundation that will build the area. We bring in the industry, we become inviting to industry, businesses will follow, young people will go to work in those places. Your blight you, you, will actually turn into making the area a go-to place. Come in here and buy a, a building and rebuild it. If it's not rebuildable, tear it down, start over and build a new building. So again, the, the, the base of industry is the best thing to take care of blight. Sure, you have to have government involved to take care of the safety sides of blight and knocking down buildings that are, are hazardous to people and so on and so forth. But I'm telling you right now, government can't do it all on blight. It, it has to be um, a booming, a growing economy to bring back uh, industry and to address the blight. It, it, a lot of the blight has to be addressed privately. Yeah. And a lot of my promotion of the city, I, I kind of make that argument to people because if, if, you're, if you did have a job, say, north of Pittsburgh and you wanted to move to Catanning, what an opportunity uh, oh, there absolutely. is as far as real estate prices. Oh, absolutely. If you're going to come in and fix up a house, you could pick up a house for $5,000 that was a Victorian you know, masterpiece at one point. I mean, you got to sink a lot of money into it, but as far as quality of living, I think people can make a really nice life here if it's promoted correctly. Right. And, and I think that's one of the things that has made Armstrong County a bedroom community for Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. You invest an hour each way driving on 28. But remember, too, 28 is a road that people love to hate. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just you get an accident on there and, and you're, you might as well shut the engine off. Yeah, it's a... Uh... 
after they changed it to two lanes the whole way, it, man, it changed or four lane the whole way. It, it really changed a lot. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that uh, it's should be what 279 was in this in the 70s and 80s. And yeah. Hopefully someday we'll see that kind of growth on the on the north area of Pittsburgh. We can all armchair quarterback that. It's it's very easy if you think about 28 going to Pittsburgh. It used to be two lanes each way. Right. Then they robbed a few lanes for for on and off ramps. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and and there's a perfectly good lane that you could be on you're not allowed on. Right, right. <laughs> now at the Highland Park Bridge they are talking about putting in actual on and off ramps which would allow the road again to be a four lane road all the way to Pittsburgh. Right. When they make that improvement, I, I believe you'll see a lot less wrecks. Yeah. Okay. Well, as you talked about county mismanagement, I believe that the cities also have have an issue. I don't think it's necessarily bad people uh, all the time, but I think that the the complexity of running a city is totally different than it used to be. And so we have part-time city council people trying to do really a full-time job. And so um, I've seen some success as far as the county and the state supporting local cities. Um, how would you as county commissioner uh, try to support local city governments to help them accomplish their task? Well, um, f- first of all, um, we also have part-time commissioners. Yeah. And that's a problem. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, that is a problem. The, the town, um, the town, we used to have angled parking on Market Street, and you had double the parking. Uh, now you have a four lane down Market Street, uh, turning lanes and that, and parallel parking, and you try not to hit the curb and that. Um, the, the, you know, working on grant money and helping uh, towns like Catani. Right now, Catani is, is struggling with having enough population to get certain grant money, and, and that's a bad situation. So we need the population in Catani. You have to remember, though, that grant money is taxpayer money. It's your money going to government. And then it's delved back out to a few areas. Yeah. <laughs> you hope, you know, the whole state pays into it. You hope you're in one of those little areas that gets some of it back. Uh, so you keep that in mind on grant money. There, there's no money trees growing up on a hill behind that courthouse. It's your money. It's the taxpayer's money. I, I'm As commissioner, I'll continue to do what I've done all along. And that is to have a presence in Harrisburg. I will be an ambassador for Armstrong County. I'm no stranger to the Capitol. You can ask Jeff Powell or Don White, and they'll tell you I've been there. Uh, this past February, I-, I traveled to Harrisburg to help the Liberty Alliance deliver 30,000 petition signatures to Tom Wolf's office. Uh, you go to my, my site on Facebook, uh, Jan Jensen for Armstrong County Commissioner, And the first few pictures you'll see on that site is me holding a dolly with half of those 30,000 petition signatures. That was quite an experience. You know, we rolled those up the steps to the Capitol um, (coughs) in through security. Uh, That was a trip. And uh, we delivered them. And, and, And I will stay active in Harrisburg representing Armstrong County. Very good. Um, well, this next one I know you're passionate about uh, as far as taxes go. Uh, that's one of the main complaints that I hear as well is that taxes are too high. Um, you know, some people complain about the school. Some people complain about the county or the or the city, and some of it's all three. And so uh, what would you do from the county perspective? What's your view on the whole tax issue? Well, we uh, – a, a couple of things. Let me give you an example, and this is this is the truth of what – makes us in Armstrong County non-competitive. I have a friend who retired and decided to price a modest home on a modest size lot, Armstrong County and Butler County. Um, he, he priced it also with the taxes. The same house, same size, same square footage, same lot size, Armstrong County, 8,000 taxes. Butler County, $4,500 taxes. Wow. So, And this is the truth, folks. A little bit over half 
to, 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 to build the same home and to own the same home in Butler County. Um, needless to say, that's what they did. They moved to Butler County. Now, this person, this friend, did work and earn his living in Armstrong County, and we're now sending our tax dollars for his pension to Butler County. Wow. So we, we, we really have to get these taxes under control. As commissioner, I pledge to attend as many school board meetings as I can in the dif in the different districts in this in this county to represent the taxpayers and hold these school boards accountable for their spending. Um, most of your school board meetings are in the evening, so that's time that you can choose to do that. And I would like to see a lot of taxpayers in these school board meetings. I'm telling you right now, you fill those seats in those meetings and the pressure is on those nine people sitting up there. Yeah. So, um, in, in, in Pennsylvania, 10,000 people a year lose their homes to, to property taxes. And Tom Wolf feels that that's okay. That's the cost of education. That's not okay. No one should lose their home to taxes. Um, our spending in this county, we spent $10 million on the 911 Motorola radio system. And then on top of that, we spent another three, three point two or 3.4 million for a 10 year maintenance contract on that same radio system. Hey, look, there's other people out there other than Motorola. You got to negotiate this kind of spending. We're not talking thousands. We're talking millions. And, and we've got a courthouse that needs repairs in the thousands, I would say. I don't think it needs repairs in the millions. We've got we to gotta spend the money wisely in the right places and need to reduce the taxes. We need to hold those that spend our tax money, we need to hold them accountable. Okay. Well, very good. Well, this is your opportunity here at the end. Um, I've been asking... I'm kind of obsessed with the idea that if we don't have a vision, we're not going to go anywhere. And so what I want to know from all the county commissioner candidates is if you would be elected, you have a couple terms in office, you know, eight to 10 years from now, what would the county look like if uh, Commissioner Jensen would get his way on everything that he wants to do? We would again become an industrialized area. Folks, that's what we need. We've lost it. A lot of you worked it. A lot of you saw it go away. You saw all the buildings torn down. We need to become industrialized again. Our young people can stay here, build a place, or buy a, a blighted place and fix it up or tear it down and raise a family. We need to grow the population. That will let us grow the tourism. Industry is a base that builds an economy. It solves the tax problems. It solves the blight problems and it solves the lack of business problems. So that's my vision, to become an industrialized area again, and I wanna be an ambassador to do that for this county. Absolutely. So uh, are there any other closing thoughts that you have that you wanted to make sure everybody knows about you? I, I do have, and, and, and please bear with me. Sure. Um, first, my mantra, not more of the same. Folks, we've had a lot of the same over many years. We've had too much of the same, and that's why we're in the shape we're in. For example, the entry bar to become a commissioner in Armstrong County is simply to show up for work. Come on, the entry bar is more than just showing up for work. You, you, we have to move ahead and do things, not just show up for work an entry bar that low just to show up for work come on we we have had a problem with lawsuits uh, back during the Patty Kirkpatrick uh, generation in, in the commissioner's office the lawsuit insurance was dropped and the reason given was because it draws lawsuits now, Andrew, you're in the insurance business. It, how do you justify dropping insurance because it might have to be used? I mean, 
Am I yeah. am I going to drop my car insurance because I'm inviting somebody to hit me? No, I, I'm going to carry car insurance. The, you, that was a major blunder when that lawsuit insurance was dropped. Next group of commissioners, the Dave Battaglia group, they come in, they draw two lawsuits. They draw the uh, sexual harassment lawsuit at the 9-11 Center, and they draw the wrongful death lawsuit out at the uh, jail. Yeah. Okay. Along comes three new young guys, this last group, and they're stuck paying the bill. Where are they going to get the money? Well, taxpayers is a good place to get the money. They, they didn't have the lawsuit insurance. It's too late now. You can't buy the insurance after the event. They, they, they got stuck paying for it. I, I'd like to know if the payment for the health center is what paid the lawsuits. I don't know. I'm sure I could file a right to know to find out. But my caution to all of us is we better have lawsuit insurance right now. We've got mold up in that courthouse. We've got people getting sick. We have some dubious hires. We're, we're, we're setting ourselves up for a lawsuit. One of the things from my training as an inf infantryman in the Army, uh, an old drill sergeant told us the night before locker inspection the next day, and he said, a word to the wise should be sufficient. And I'm telling you, a word to the wise, it better get some lawsuit insurance. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I want to explain to you the importance of the primary. This um, is important, absolutely. We have a, a dismal turnout, folks. We have around 20%. Understand this. The primary is where you eliminate a lot of candidates. The general election in the fall, you, you already have your three candidates. You're going to eliminate one. And in the fall, you're going to either set up the Republican majority or the Democrat majority. That's all you're doing in the fall. Get out to the primary. Get out and vote on May 21st. Absolutely. Um, again, just, uh, go ahead. And just to explain that a little bit more, for example, four years ago in the election, there were probably 15 candidates. Correct. And so when it came down to the primary, the primary just eliminates it down to two in each party. So you're going right. from 15 to four. And then in the fall, we're just going to go from four to three. Right. Now this year we have seven candidates. So it's, it's more important, the primary, because we're going to eliminate three of them in the primary, and Correct. we're going to only eliminate one in the fall. So that's why I'm doing this whole series of interviews now, because May 21st is really the important date of this election. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's way more important than the fall. Yeah. Sorry. Go back. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. I just wanted to make sure everybody understood that. Again, so. again, I want to promote the two veterans. Look, we've served our country. Anthony Che and I have both served our country, and we're both willing to serve Armstrong County. We have a world of experience, and including... Armstrong County experience. You know, I, I pledge to attend the school board meetings. I pledge to be at work every day. Um, I pledge to stay active in, in property taxes and reducing property taxes. I, I pledge to promote Armstrong County to business as an ambassador for the county. Uh, I promise to be active in negotiations. I will communicate with the media every week. That's been promised in the past, and it's never been carried through. So the reporters trail around behind people trying to get information. That's wrong. We have to have the public knowing what's going on. Um, and, uh, again, uh, going to continue to promote House Bill, Senate Bill 76, and try to save people's homes. The taxes are having people lose too many homes in this state. Absolutely. So if anyone wants to get involved with your campaign or they have additional questions for you, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Well, um, a number of ways. Uh, I do have um, campaign literature out and about. Uh, on there I have my email address, uh, my cell phone, uh, it's yawn at jnjgraphics.com. It's all misspelled intentionally, uh, but that information can be readily made available. It's also on my Facebook site on Yawn Jansen for Armstrong County Commissioner. Okay. My cell phone, 724-954-8270. Uh, 
Call me. Um, I'm not the best with a phone because I tend to not interrupt things that I'm doing if the phone rings. But, <laughs> That's a but positive I'll, thing. <laughs> I'll, I'll get I'll get back to you. Um, I, I, Andrew, I want to thank you for your time, uh, folks. I'm I'm Jan Jensen, the conservative veteran Republican candidate for Armstrong County Commissioner. That's very good. Uh, you guys, as always, um, I will put all the links in the description uh, for his contact information and for his Facebook page. Um, you know, I just really thank you guys for uh, sticking with these interviews. Hopefully you learned a little bit about Jan, uh, enough to, um, to inform your decision uh, for the voting on May 21st. And um, just stay tuned. Uh, there's going to be several more interviews coming for the rest of the commissioner candidates. But cannot thank you enough, sir. Okay. It's thank been a real you, pleasure. Andrew. And uh, we'll see all of you guys in the next one.